So hi guys, uh, in the last video we covered um, databases and how to call databases using SQL and we covered some SQL basics like select, where, and, and or. So in this video we're gonna call this database using Python and before we start let's get rid of that dictionary we don't need that right now and we also don't need that let me comment this thing out i might i will need it for, uh, later and let's comment that out again comment out and this stuff i actually don't need right great so now in order to be able to call SQLite databases from Python, you need to extend Python. The standard Python cannot call SQLite databases or any other database for that matter. The standard Python has certain functions like string here or str convert to string or print or you saw when we had lists, we had len to get the length of the list and so on. In order to have more functionality, and you will notice that in future when you deal more and more or delve deeper into Python, that you need to extend Python. And the way you extend Python is with import statements. And in this case, we wish to extend Python to, to be able to handle uh, SQLite, uh, SQLite database. And the, and the module we need here is uh, SQLite 3, and that's why we import it. Import SQLite 3. Now we have basically extended uh, Python for it to be capable of handling SQLite 3 uh, or SQLite uh, databases. Right now, first thing we have to uh, fix is where is the database? Well, the path basically. So db path, and that is this here. Right. Now, uh, you have to pay attention to one thing, especially when you're on Windows system, systems. Um, in Windows, you separate children from their parents with a backslash. Now, a backslash also means escape. We've seen it here previously. Um, I had this apostrophe, and in order to make clear to Python that this is an apostrophe and not the end of the string, which started here, I had to escape this apostrophe with uh, a backslash. And there are other escape characters I know, uh, or pairings uh, rather. Um, I know, for instance, this one means tab, this one means new line, this one means break line, if I'm not mistaken, and there are others I don't know by heart. And in order for Python not to mistake this with break line, for instance, you escape this backslash with another backslash. So what happens here is that instead of Python seeing this pairing and misunderstanding that as a break line, it now sees this pairing and understands, oh, this is just a backslash. And that's why in Windows, where the paths are all separated with uh, or peppered with uh, backslashes, what you do, you escape all those backslashes with another backslash, and that's why you have those bug, uh, double uh, backslashes, okay? That's, in other systems, I don't know how other systems handle it. Uh, I think in Linux, it's a forward slash, so in this case, obviously, you don't need any escape, and I, I don't know any other systems uh, or, or how other systems handle that. But in Windows, you have this backslash, and it's best always to escape that with a further backslash. That's why all paths are written this way regardless whether you know whether that means anything or not it's just a safety uh, measure right so we've set the path a path now we have to uh, create our connection and i will call that source database connection or let's just call it database connection let's keep it short database connection and here we need our module sqlite3 and we're going to call a function called connect and it connects to the db path okay 
So obviously I could have written this string, I could have written this string in here, but uh, I, I don't know if I would need that variable further down the line, especially with bigger applications. And that's why I prefer to put the strings in a separate variable and then use this variable. So in case I have or want to relocate my database, I just change this string and that variable, you know, just handles it in all the other, uh, in all the other code further down the line. Again, applying this dry principle I, I talked about very early in this series. Okay, great. Now we've got, we've set up our database connection. Now we have to set up our cursor. What's a cursor? A cursor in a database is something similar to the cursor in a text editor. Uh, the connection is basically the document where we are, and that's our database. And now we have to set the cursor, you know, where do you want to write? You want to write here or here or here, you know, and that's the cursor. It's, it's something like that. And I don't need that either. Right. And the way you set up your cursor is database cursor is your connection, basically database connection, and call the function cursor. That's it. Right. Now our cursor, in our cursor right now, we can have we can have it execute SQL code. So Let's try it out. Database cursor. So let's copy that. I like copying because I avoid spelling errors, which costs time, especially when making a video. And uh, oh, sorry. Uh, cursor execute. And in here we can write our SQL code. And let's say select everything from. And if I'm not mistaken, our table was called conversion factors. Let me go back to the database. Yep, it's called conversion factors. Right, great. So from and open square bracket. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I like to insert my table and field names in square brackets. Con, oh, conversion factors and close and close quote. So that's my SQL statement and the cursor would execute that and then I would have my found data and this is basically my database cursor and fetch all. Right. Save. And I've got, now we can also add a print statement, print found data. So, and now we should be, we should get everything what's in, a, in that database, everything what is in that table conversion factors. Let's try it out. Let's run it. And yes, squeeze text, two or three lines, let's double click that, and here we go. Let me let me put that in a text editor, it makes it easier to read. Let's copy that. There's a lot of data, just, just output the whole table basically. Copy. So I just inserted that in a, in a text editor. And now what do we got here? Well, look at this. This is a square bracket, and here at the bottom is another square bracket. What does that tell you? Well, it's a list, isn't it? It's a list, and in that list, we have this. This is the first element. That would be the second element, and so on, and each element is separated by a comma. So we have what the database is outputting is a list, and each element is a row, is the row in the table. That's the first row. You can notice in the IDs, that's the second row in the table, that's the third row, and so on. Right, what are those elements? Well, that is the row, and this element is called a tuple. We haven't dealt with tuples yet, but a tuple, see a tuple right now, just it's like a list, but instead of square brackets, it's got round brackets. That's it. That's the only difference right now, as far as we're concerned. We're going to deal with tuples later on. They have some differences, but right now, let's see them as just another list, but instead of uh, square brackets, it just has round brackets. That's it. And you can, you can call, like with the list, 
If I need to call that element, I have to call the list with index zero. If I need to call that element, for instance, I would have to call that inner list or tuple with element zero, one in this case, okay? And if I need to call this element, then it would be zero, one, two, three, and so on, okay? Right, so let's summarize. When I call a database, what a database returns is an outer list. This outer list contains the individual rows, and then in each row, there is an inner list or tuple containing the data. In this case, we have four fields. That's why our tuple has four elements. Okay. If we had three fields, our tuple would have three elements. Okay, great. So that's the way the database outputs. And now, if I go back to Python, I mean, knowing from lists, you know, I can call a list, I can call an element in a list through its index. Well, what happens if I call found data but zero? Save that, F5, and you see I'm just getting the first element. If I put in, let's say, 17, I'm getting the 17th element, yeah? Mile meter, yeah? And if I need to get, for instance, this word, that is zero, one. So from element 17 in the outer list, I need from the inner list element one. Save that, run, and I'm getting just a mile. This is this mile here. So this, this here is element 17 of the outer list, and this here is element one of element 17. Okay, so that's how you can have double indices. One is for the outer list and one is for the inner list. And obviously, if I change that to three, I would get the conversion factor itself, F5, and I would get that conversion factor. Okay, so that's, that's how you deal with uh, database um, output. Okay, and now here, we're now able to call an SQLite database from Python. It's a very simple process, but now the thing is that we have uh, basically just uh, called the whole uh, everything from the table. Now, obviously, I can here say, you know what, just get me the, you know, con what are the fields called? Let me go back to the database. They're called convert from, convert to, and factor without the ID, so I can limit that to convert from, okay, then comma, convert to, and then uh, factor. Right, save that. Uh, let's call all the data. And now, what do you expect? I Well, I would expect my tuples or inner list to just have three elements instead of four. Okay, let's try it out. Save and run. And again. Oh, you know what? Let's let's call let's call just a few sets. Uh, let's call one. Let's try it out. And you see my inner list just has three elements. And I can call not just one, I can call, for instance, let's say six elements or seven elements from zero to seven, excluding seven. And I would have, you see here, my outer list is here. And my inner list now has only three elements because I'm just calling three fields. Okay. Great. So now we're able to call a database. And obviously, um, if I need just the factor itself, I can just go like this. And hence, I have reduced... And this is basically what we need. And I have basically reduced uh, my uh, output, my database output to just uh, one field. And basically my inner list, that tuple would just have one element. Let's see how it looks. Go, uh, okay, save. Oh yeah, I just, instead of save, I just type an S, save, and then run it. And you see here now, I have an outer list with those seven elements, 
But now the inner list just contains only the conversion factors. So now we know how to call databases. And in the next video, we're going to now build our where statement because I need to cater for the user inputs in order to build my where statements. And let me just put it here. The where statement I'm looking for is something like this. Where? We had it last time, convert. Let's do a sort of a, sort of a sample, con oh, sorry, convert uh, from. That's the way the field is called, isn't it? Uh, convert from and convert to, right. So where convert from is equal to kilometer and convert to is equal to mile. So this is a static fixed um, um, where statement, and we have to make it dynamic depending on what the user is inputting. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video, and we're going to finalize this um, version where we then are able to calculate our conversions based on the database output.